What's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR. So I'm going to give you my first impressions for Resident Evil Village. So I've played about three or four hours of Resident Evil Village so far and the game is said to be about maybe 10, 11, 12 hours, something in that range. So I guess you can say I played uh, maybe 25 to 33 percent of the game, right? Fairly a, a short a game on the shorter side uh, compared to uh, the length of games we're getting now nowadays, right? But you know that's not necessarily an issue for me. Some of my favorite games are, are short. You know I don't think uh, the length of a game ne uh, necessarily dictates its quality, so that's not necessarily a problem. I like long uh, shorter games so, uh, on occasion. So before I get into my actual feelings about Resident Evil Village, uh, I just want to reiter reiter reiterate my stance on how I feel about uh, Resident Evil's change to first person, uh, which started with uh, Resident Evil 7. I wasn't a huge fan of Resident Evil 7. I feel like they got the horror atmosphere correct. It was definitely a return to horror survival, right? And I appreciate that. I love that aspect of it, especially the sound design, right? They really focused on the sound design and the horror atmosphere. Uh, it was just creepy. It was airy. It was just a very uncomfortable game uh to really play through and be immersed in um especially with the baker family uh they were very creepy villains but other than that i wasn't a fan of the game outside of those things right i wasn't a fan of the combat i felt like the combat was a huge step down uh it, it didn't feel great in first person um and the story wasn't necessarily something i was very uh very interested in it felt like a very isolated uh, story in the grand scheme of the Resident Evil world. It didn't feel like it pushed the story forward. I I'm, I do care about the story and the narrative that's currently happening in in the res in the Resident Evil universe. And this just seemed seemed like a random and isolated story about one person. And I I do think so. Towards the end of Resident Evil Seven, they they started to connect it a little bit. And I'm hoping as by the time I get to the 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 end of Resident Evil Eight things connect more and this wasn't just a, a random entry in in the series. I hope there's some some meaningful meaningful aspect and all of this is happening for a larger reason, right? So I wasn't a fan of Resident Evil 7. You know, I didn't feel like they needed to go to uh first person. That wasn't the issue with Resident Evil. It wasn't the camera angle. It was simply the fact that they uh they they went too far away from the horror survival aspect. Um, because set six was an absolute trash action game. Uh, five was, I like five, but it was definitely more of an action game than Resident Evil. To me, yes, four was the, uh, was the close to perfect balance. I, I say four is like Dead Space 2, where Dead Space 2 was more action than Dead Space 1, but it was like the perfect middle ground. So Resident Evil, everybody knows Resident Evil 4 is my, my favorite Resident Evil. So let me get into Village. So the story, first of all, the the, the concept, um, Ethan Winters, once again, he's the protagonist. Uh, his baby is kidnapped and he's t and she's taken to a village of these supernatural uh, creature creatures um, like lichens and vam vampires and, and things like that. And these creatures are like in some type of cult family and everything like that. So that's kind of the basic concept that that's the whole setup. And Ethan Winters at this point is kind of like, I, I mean, I've just brought up Dead Space and everything. Ethan Winters is pretty much Isaac Clarke in the in the Dead Space universe. I mean, he's Isaac Clarke in the Resident Evil universe. This guy is just, is just the unluckiest person ever, right? And once again, I'm hoping that the story reveals something that really connects Ethan Winters and his family to the Resident Evil universe and why he's so important. Because as of right now, he just seems like a random, irrelevant character. He's a very uninteresting character. I don't think he's, he's he's written very well. I don't think they really put that much thought into his character. As far as I'm concerned, Ethan Winters is is honestly just a pair of floating arms. He could literally be anybody. It, it's not like the long list of great protagonists that we've gotten in pre previous Resident Evil games. Not like Claire Redfield or or Leon or or Chris or anybody like that he he's really you know not anybody important that we really care about like that they they haven't given us any reason to care about him like that right so 
I, like I said, I, I don't really care about him as a protagonist. Maybe that will change depending on how the story goes. But that's the concept. He's trying to save his baby, right? Because um, one, because in the first game, oh, his girlfriend goes missing. Got to find her. This game, his his baby is kidnapped. Got to go get her. Okay, a whole bunch of save saving missions. You know, Mario and P Princess Peach type stuff. Okay, cool. Um, so the first few hours of the game, the the. I had, the issue I had with it is it felt very scripted. Now I, I like set pieces. I'm I'm not somebody who knocks a game for having set pieces, but there's a lot of things that are like, especially early in the game, um, it has a high presentation, uh, you know, presentation value. But like things are just so scripted, man. Like it's just you play cutscene, you play cutscene, you play, and and it, and it happens like they they don't give you. An extended period of time where you are in control it, there's just a lot of like uh parts of the script where some type of a uh, scene um you know occurs and i'm like can i can i have control of this just a little bit longer and i do like that it starts very fast right let, let me say that it, it picks up very fast right because you know i'm I don't like games that take really long to get going. I shouldn't have to play three hours for a game to get going. A game should get going in the first hour, hour and a half. And Resident Evil jumps off very, Resident Evil Village jumps off very quick. So I like that. It, it, it gets going very quick. It gets to the action. It, it gets to what's going on very quick. And I like that. It doesn't waste time. The voice acting is good. I, I heard I heard some people said the voice acting you know, was, a, was they found it problematic or there was an issue. Uh, it seems pretty great to me. Um, the voice acting and the performances are, performances are good. Uh, the villains are seems to be pretty well thought out. Um, one thing I, I've loved so far and what I love about Resident Evil uh, is that they, is the way they introduce you to the villains and also give you more information about the villains, whether it's through, you know, notes, um, or just little hints and clues and you know sometimes I don't like to read a whole bunch of notes in, in video games to to know all the extra things that are going on uh, that they don't directly tell you from playing the game but in Resident Evil they do it in a, in a very uh, they do it in a way that doesn't feel cumbersome it doesn't feel like a chore little short notes little hints here and there and I, I, I really I really like that right um, and what I do, what I also like is that the trailer of Resident Evil Village, if you've watched it, it kind of makes you believe a cert, uh, the, that the game happens in a certain sequence. And then when you play the game, okay, this is not the sequence I thought the game was going to happen in. And that's good because I felt like the trailers gave way too much away. But the trailers are actually pretty misleading as far as the sequence of the game game goes. And I'm happy about that because I thought it was going to be a lot more predictable. Getting into like the gunplay and the combat. One of the issues I have with Resident Evil uh, going in first person is the combat is awkward, right? I felt the same way in 7. It feels awkward and kind of janky. It, Resident, Evil 7, Resident Evil 7 and 8 didn't feel like it was designed to be a first person shooter. It feels like the it feels like this was a game, like a fan-made project and the community modded the game to be in, in first person. Almost like you know how uh let's say GTA, right? Even though the developers, you know, Rockstar actually put first person in the game. Anybody who plays GTA and tried out first person knows it felt awkward, weird and and janky. It, it's clear that the third person a uh, view perspective was the better was the better angle it felt natural right the first person view and, and the gunplay doesn't feel natural and intuitive and and, and fluid in, in resident evil in resident evil village right seven and, and village it just felt like it, it was done by a modding community rather than the actual developers so you know, e even when you get into like some of the mechanics, like blocking with your arms, that doesn't, it, it feels like that's once again, something that the modding community put in the game, just the animation of it and just how it, how it like blends into the game uh, for you to protect yourself against enemy hits. It just doesn't feel right. And I could, it, that could just be the Resident Evil purist in me, 
You know, maybe, maybe that's what it is, but it just doesn't sit with me very well. Just the way it looks, the way it anim- it's animated, and the way it like flows into the uh, the, the the gameplay mechanics. So yeah, and, and and it and Resident Evil Seven was very much Outlash, Outlash, excuse me, Outlast, which I love Outlast by the way, but that's not what I play a Resident Evil game for. It, it was very much Outlast. Resident Evil Eight is a much better than. Uh, and I'm going to call it Resident Evil 8 or Village. You know, it's interchangeable. But I, I do think it's a much better game than 7. I, I will give it that. And I am enjoying that. I should have said that at the top. Even though I'm not a fan of a lot of things and a lot of the changes, it is a Resident Evil Village is a much better game than, than 7 in every way so far. In story, uh, in, in the gameplay, um, the visuals are great, of course, and I'm going to get to that. The enemies are okay. I mean, it's it's you know you start out with lichens and then you get to the uh, you know the castle. By the way, I'm not going to mention any major spoilers. You get to the castle. Uh, there's some slow moving uh, enemies in, in there, similar to zombies, but they're of course they're they're not zombies. Um, you know, slow moving enemies that are pretty easy to target. You know, headshots and everything like that. I've come across some enemies that can fly, um, and you know. It's not spoilers because everybody knows by now you have to uh, uh, take on Lady. Uh, I'm I'm probably gonna butcher her name. Demes uh, Demes. I'm not man. Forget it. Don't even worry about it. Like I hit. She's. They've said her name so many times in in the game, and I still can't get it right. So I'm not even gonna take. We're we're gonna call her Lady D. Got to take on Lady D on her, and her daughters and everything like that. They're like vampire mutant bug creatures or something like that I, like i said i don't want to spoil it the, the game gets into it so there's decent enemy variety so far there's some puzzles of course this is a resident evil game so there's still the the inventory management the uh the ammo management even though i'm playing on normal right now i'm gonna play on hardcore uh after probably after i beat the game because i do think i'm enjoying it enough to want to play the game again and i'll probably live stream um, the game when I play it on hardcore, by the way, I had initially wanted to live stream my first playthrough, but you know, I was having PC issues and all that and all of that. But um, I digress. So yeah, there's the inventory management, the you know, there's plenty of ammo on normal, so you won't really have to worry about ammo um you know, preserving and conserving your ammo as much. Of course, there's crafting, um, but there's also the merchant in the game. If you need to upgrade your weapons, buy recipes, buy whatever, uh, or you can find, you know, scrap and and uh items around around the game to craft uh some weapons and things like that. Um the visuals, the game is the game looks great. It's it's beautiful. I mean the lighting, the shadows, the texture. I'm playing on PC, uh, you know, 4K. Um mostly maxed out i don't have ray tracing on to me y'all know my stance on ray tracing i think ray tracing is 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 over um you know it's overrated it's overblown it's not worth it i play without ray tracing um so the game the game is is, is beautiful right you know there's there's screen space reflections there's ssao there's a whole bunch of lighting techniques like i say it a million times i don't feel like ray tracing is really needed when you have all these different lighting techniques implemented um, I love the character design. Let me see. I, I feel like the character design, um, especially the villains, are well thought thought out. Right? It, it, it's it's there's Resident Evil is pretty known for their villains. I would say, but I feel like in the past there's been besides the main villain, they have a lot of like throwaway villains in between. And even though I don't like that that, that Resident Evil Village is is a lot more Resident Evil 7 and Village is a lot more about the the villains than the protagonists. I feel like in the past the the you know the importance of the uh the protagonists and the villains were like almost equally important. These games are a lot more about the villain. Like when they were promoting and marketing uh Resident Evil Village, you didn't hear anything about Ethan Winters because nobody cares about Ethan Winters and his character is poorly developed. Right. They only promoted Lady D, her daughters, uh, you know, some of the lichens. So it's really the villains that are carrying uh, these Resident Evil games right now. Right. And I, I like how much effort they put uh, in into like really differentiating each one of these villains looks like giving them a very u- unique look, a very unique personality, um, you know, characteristics uh you know both both physical 
and, and to their like character traits, all of that stuff. So I really like that they put in a, a lot of effort uh, to do that. But yeah, the character designs look amazing. Um, I played on both PS5 and PC because Jack Move is my share, uh, my share play partner. Um, so I played a little bit of the game on PS5 just to see how it looked pretty much. And I was surprised. Like I'm, su I, I play all my multi plats on PC. So I always have it in my mind that all multi plats are going to look pretty bad um, <laughs> on console. But I sometimes forget like, oh, we're in a new generation. Now, even though it definitely doesn't look as good as it does on PC, PC looks, you know, amazing. I was surprised at how good it looked on PS5. It definitely, definitely looks pretty damn clean. And I like that the game is is very gory. It's very violent. You know, some Resident Evil games, uh, some have more gore and violence than, than other ones. Um, this one is very visual and gory, especially in the first two hours. And I like that it's like very, it's a very dark and like, um, it, it has like a lot of scenes of torture, and I, and I like and I like that the sound design is amazing. That's like something as I as I said they got right in Resident Evil Seven uh, was the was the sound design. They do this the atmosphere is perfect, right? And they do this thing where it, the game can be disturbingly quiet, and they do it to amplify other sounds. So it could be very eerily quiet, but you can hear footsteps and that makes it very uncomfortable. I do still want them to go back to third person, but I, I am, in, am enjoying the game, uh, even though like my first hour, you know, I didn't hour and a half. I didn't feel like I was having that much fun uh, just because I, I think, you know, combat is just better in third person. Um, so I'm having fun, but I still don't think I'm having as much fun as I would if it was a third person shoot but let me know what y'all think about resident evil village if you played it so far please hit the like button follow me on twitter hit the notification bell uh so you can know anytime i upload or live stream all right i'll check y'all later i'm out of here peace